I wasn't crying or anything, okay? I'm sorry. I was a little upset. I... Um... Think of you as a friend, too. What the heck? Here I am trying to find something decent about you, and you... I don't care anymore, stupid! I'm not acting like a little girl! What? You're not going to back out, are you? You already promised. I'm taking you whether you like it or not, okay? How's it going, everybody? Hudlumut here, back with some more Steins Gate. And uh, last time, we had a whole other section that we just, like, didn't get to see the first time around when I first started this game. And that was really fun. That was fun to go back and be old Okabe before, you know, everything went crazy. And uh, we got, like, a whole other section that kind of filled us in on, on, on how we maybe should have found out about Forrest knowing about the IBM 5100 and her dad owning one at one point and donating it and yada yada yada. We got we got some, uh, like, at least another cutscene with uh, Kuretsu that was, uh, I believe, not there the first time around. And uh, now we are on Chapter 3 again after we had just gotten the IBM 5100 back home. Um... And, uh, yeah, so we're just gonna keep continuing until we can get, uh, to this true ending. So, uh, let's, uh, let's just start with the next, uh, section that we have to do, which is I gotta wait for a particular email from Faris, I guess. Um. No! No! Oh, did I miss it? Wait a minute. Ah. Alright, there we go. And right, okay, this is the one. Phantasm is the cat's meow. Um so there's two different routes here I can do, apparently. I can reply one way or another. And I don't know which achievement I want to do so let's just do let's do the easiest one first well no let's do the hardest one sure I think we were already doing the uh the hero of Rhyna achievement so let's do that one let's do theme song so have you bought uh phantasm's debut single yeah it's the theme song uh for Rhyna Kakadu. so it's really popular Faris bought five copies, Nya. It's my duty as a Rynetter. Anyway, there's an important secret hidden in Fan... Phantasm. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Phantasm songs. Uh, the key to unlocking it is... Oops! The bell's ringing, Nya. Looks like someone's here. Better see who it is. Uh, sure. Let's do this one. Theme song. Is this another part of Operation Stupefy Humanity? <laughs> Explain. Okay. Alright, so that's one. So then we gotta wait for the reply. I am getting nothing from- Oh, okay. Faris? Nope, that's Lukako. Huh. It never sent me another one. Interesting. Okay. She Yeah, she never sent me another one after this. Uh, okay. Well, we'll just go with uh, Lukaku's because this is another one, interestingly enough, which is, uh, uh, let's see, okay. Um, Kiyoma-san, are you familiar with Jiro Froggies? Or Euro Froggies, maybe. Or Gero? Gero Froggies? <laughs> I guess if it's Japanese. They were a huge fad last year. We have tons of them at the shrine. So if you like, uh, could you take a few off our hands? Dad brought a whole box home for some reason. And he said they were for me. I don't know what to do with them. P.S. I was so bewildered I couldn't do any practice swings with Samadare. Okay, so we are supposed to reply with Jiro Froggies, or Jiro Get Ghetto, whatever. Those weird-looking frog things that were popular with teenage girls in Shibuya last year, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they came out with a wide variety of them. 
I wonder if that's based off anything specifically. Huh. Anyway, yeah, let's do that one. Shenfinger sends so many. Moika, just stop. Stop. I'm looking for another Luca mail right now. This one? Yes! Okay. More news about the frogs. There are only two or three types in the box. I'll send you a picture. If you want any, please tell me. I'll bring them over. P.S. I did ten practice swings. Great. Awesome. Uh, let me see that bad boy. Hey! <laughs> Yo! Look at this Kermit looking. <laughs> look at this hidey hole little. <laughs> Yo, my boy, where's Miss Piggy? Oh my goodness. What the heck? Okay. Cool. Well, we got that. So that, that should have given us progress on a particular achievement. Uh, not that, that necessarily matters heading toward the true ending, but uh, may as well pick it up along the way. So we should have one more in this chapter. Uh, okay, so this next one is going to be a call from Daru, and I'm sure I picked it up the first time. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I didn't just not pick it up. And depending on what you do, something happens. So I'm going to do the one that I think will make sense for the true ending, which is, if you ignore it, we should get a scene with Kuritsu. That's right, the male. What male? I don't even know what you're talking about. What male? Whoa, wait a minute, what the frick? Are these new? Okabe is an airhead. I drank so much coffee, I... Uh, it hurts. Okay, that's the jumbled one. These are all sent to us! Before this one. What? Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This is, this is... How many let... Letters work? Is she doing... I don't remember this. Did we not check this before? What's up? I... Uh, it's all good. Bye... What? I am... I don't know what that says. Someone translate, please, in the comments. What? Okay, that was that one. Uh... Christine. Kristen? Christian? I think that's Christine. Uh, what the heck is this? Oh, Christina is not my three lines. What? Not my three lines is the limit. Uh, rest, dis, uh, one or two bite, change limit, A-I-U-E-O-K-A, what? Kiku keko sa si, uh, right, okay, so then go up one more. Su say so. Da ti do. A B C D E F G H I J K L. M N O P Q R S T U V W X. Y Z. I got it now. Two byte equals six characters. One byte equals twelve characters. One more, please. What the frick? These are different. I don't remember this. I don't remember that the first time around. Timer change with 60 seconds. Yeah, okay. Yeah, these are these have been put in here without us knowing about it. These these have been thrown in here among these other ones that we knew about. What? Change ETA with timer. Change ETA with timer? One second equals one hour. What? I don't understand. Also, what am I checking for? Oh, okay. He just does it. Okay. Yeah, look at all these ones from... Did I, did I notice this the first time around and I just never went and checked them? 
She sent us a bunch of stuff. Does that matter? All right. Yeah, the code. Whatever. Buy Lotto 6. Okay, yeah, this is the Lotto 6 thing. What the heck? Okay, whatever. I guess we'll just move forward. No! Oh, okay. I'm so used to clicking that. Oh, there it is! Okay, so she just sent it like a year and a half later. Got you. Okay. Um. So, if we're going to be keeping with the one I wanted to try and keep with, let's do Rynet Kakadu. Um. So, uh, Rynet OP2. Rynet Kakadu's second OP theme, Nya. First played in episode 14, Nyan. Uh, it's super cool, Nya. Uh, looks like it made big news last year in Shibuya's indie scene. But I never thought she'd make a major debut, Nya. Wow, a girl after my own heart. I freaking love OPs as well. I freaking love music. Uh, that, uh, from, uh, anime OPs. In fact, I made a, <laughs> a video about it that I can't release because YouTube won't let me. <laughs> about my absolute favorite OP that I think is better than any other OP. But, uh, oh well. Maybe someday I'll be able to show all the rest of you. Anyway. Just had to vent there for a second since it just brought up all those memories. Rynet Kakadu. <laughs> Speaking of which, Meiri loves that show. Is it even popular with teenage girls? Great. Okay, so then the next thing she sends us should be getting us further in the achievement or hero of Rynet. Yep, okay, that's gotta be her. Yep, there it is. I sent you a rundown of episode 13 so you can see what it's like, Nya. Uh, I'll lend you the DVD sometime, Nya. Ah, but it might be quicker to borrow it from Meirinyan. Alright. Oh, shoot! Is this a whole episode? Rynet Kakadu Access number 11, Prince of J Redux. J starts another s cyber terror incident. Kakadu starts off in pursuit, but is repelled by the enemy. He and his friends are struck with a freeze program by the monster program, uh, Vios. Uh, while they're left defenseless, Jay talks to Kakaru via voice chat. Kakaru, why do you try to stop me? Uh, why are you doing this? I, uh, is suffering really that fun for you? Jay's answer is that he is merely testing his own power to see if he can break the unbreakable, steal the unstealable, to test himself. Is that not why Kakaru became a net guardian? Kakaru says that's not true. After saying that Kakaru's not being honest, Jay departs. After hearing Jay's words, Kakaru finds himself wavering, wondering why he really became a net guardian. He wanted to make use of his brilliant knowledge and technique handed down to him by his father. He didn't gain power with the goal of becoming a guardian. Did I become a guardian just to test my own power? Kakaru is troubled, sitting in front of his computer. He doubts his, his own heart. Without Kakaru's interference, Jay's invasion reaches the Japanese Traffic Ministry's uh, main computer. Accidents are happening everywhere. While tragic news flashes continue, uh, Kakaru is unable to fight back. One report catches his eye. Someone's father has died. The circumstances also seem familiar to him. Snapping out of it, Kakaru turns back to his keyboard. The battle between Kakaru and Jay begins anew. Okay. Right. I would have answered this, I'm sure of it. Just then my phone rings. So we're not gonna answer it. Uh, and I don't think it matters, right? Yeah, okay. Just then my phone rings. Is it Titter? Titter's calling me? Startled, I look at my phone's display. It's Daru. I click my tongue in disappointment. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. Christina, there's something I want to talk to you about. Shouldn't you answer your phone first? 
It's Dadu. It's probably something stupid. <laughs> Before he left, Dadu said he was going to May Queen. He had a silly grin on his face. There's no way he'd suddenly call me for something serious. Ha <laughs> ha! What the heck? Okay. You're really self-righteous, you know. You might not remember this, but earlier, I changed the past with a D-mail. <sighs> Karutsu stares at me. Her expression is more stern than usual. I haven't known you long enough to tell whether you're serious. It happened. And then everyone except me forgot about it. Or, or rather, the fact that it happened was erased from history. The past changed, so the present changed with it. The butterfly effect, huh? But what you're saying is nonsense. Why do you say that? Why do you remember that the past changed? If you used a time machine to physically travel to the past and change history, then that might explain it. Barely. But with a D-mail? You haven't taken one step outside the present, have you? So if the present changed, and we changed with it, you would have to change too. Or are you saying you didn't change because you're, an, you're the observer? In that case, you're claiming that you're not a human being. I understand what Kuritsu's saying, and I don't have the means to convince her otherwise. And that's exactly why I'm trying to get in touch with Titter. Everything is the choice of Steinsgate. This is the power of my magic eye, reading Steiner! <laughs> and he's at it again. <laughs> Karutsu sighs and goes back to her book. I'm not playing along with your games. I bet you came up with that reading whatever thing just now, didn't you? <sighs> I should have known better than to approach Karutsu unprepared. There's still not enough information, even for a mad scientist like me, to explain the things I've experienced. I bite my lip in frustration. Okay. <sighs> you look like a girl in love waiting for an email from her boyfriend. Okay, I think we were I think we've been here before. <laughs> All right. So now we're in chapter 4, and I believe things from here get quite diversive. I think I think this is where things matter. So let me save real quick. Okay. So, right. Okay, so this is the first thing. So, um, when Mayuri emails you about the lottery, so I'm assuming this is... Yep, okay. This is the lottery one. Okay, so, uh, Mayushi won a magazine sweepstakes once. Amazing, huh? You know the hero of Gunbam, Setsuri? I won an autograph from his voice actor. Okay. So, this is apparently enough of a choice that we have to say magazine, I guess. You're still reading anime magazines? You're a true otaku. So, we'll do that. Apparently, some of the... The choices for achievements uh, and the choices needed for the true ending are mutually exclusive. That's what this says. So we have to do things very carefully here, make sure that we do things properly. Okay. This one, is it from Mayuri? No, this one's from Lukako. So Mayuri chan's obsessed with this anime called Rynet, so I rented it to see what it was about. I don't usually watch anime, and when I do, I prefer romance but I found this anime to be pretty deep, even though it's aimed at children. I was surprised. I was so engrossed in Ry Oh, P.S. I was so engrossed in Rynet, I couldn't do any practice swings with Samadare. I'm sorry. Yo. Yo, I'm into romance ones too, yo. Let's go. Ow! 
Okay, wait, I gotta check this. Oh, you also have a thing. Okay. Um, on to the future, Rynet Formation. Completely engrossed by their discussion, Kerari and Tamaru raised their voices. Just what sort of person is Kakaru? Kakaru is actually a warrior who protects the order of the internet, a net guardian. Kerari and Tamaru wanted to tell their friends how cool that was, but Kakaru forbade them. Uh, due to the risk that he may have to fight with the culprit. At that time, they received news that the mystery hacker, uh, Beesman, <laughs> Beesman? What? has attacked an online game server. Kakaru immediately cha challenges him using Nagaya-san's newly made Rynet card and the unique browser Alpha Gate. Yeah, this show really sounds... <laughs> Like a mixture between Yu-Gi-Oh and uh, and uh, Netrunner, like absolutely sounds like a a mixture of the two. Uh, the first use of a new Rynet card, despite his lack of experience, Kakaru successfully casts his boot spell. But just when Kakaru thinks he has easily won won against the Cracker, uh, Beesman, who has complete control of the game server overwrites the game system, sealing Kakaru deep within the game's loop dungeon, or or the Shadow Realm. <laughs> Banished him to the Shadow Realm. Kakaru is in danger. At that moment, somehow, Karari and Tamaru also serve server dive. Uh, they came to save Kakaru. Furthermore, these two are well versed in this game. As game players, they couldn't forgive the hacker who had taken over the server and toyed with the game players, so they decided to join forces with Kakaru. With their magnificent assistance and Kakaru's shoot ability, they successfully defeat Beesman. Apparently Kakaru was doing shoot style before uh, Deku ever did. <laughs> and when they do, suddenly an unknown chat window opens on their monitor. It's a signal from the Tokyo Me Metropolitan... Uh, police department. By any chance, are they here to praise us? They think in delight, but the police turn to them and say, you're under arrest. Interesting. Okay. Oh, wait, I need to reply. Uh, romance, let's see. Uh, let's just... That's your problem right there. You can't waste your time with romance fluff. <laughs> if you have that much free time then practice with Samadare or Rynet. Now you're hooked on Rynet? Everyone around me is buying into this Rynet craze. How can it be so popular? Don't tell me it's an organization plot. Yeah, let's go with that one. I like that one better. We ain't gonna dis romance anime. That crap can that that that, that crap makes you ball, bro. That turns a grown man into a child. Alright, here we go. So the next one that we have is a big one. This is a this is a big um, particular decision that we have to make. So uh, I'm going to see. I'm going to wait for it to come. Right. Okay. Should be right here. Yep. Okay. Okay. So this is an important decision apparently. So uh, did you write it? Have you written that report yet? For your information, I wasn't joking yesterday. If you if you uh, blow this off, then you have no right to call yourself a scientist. Uh, maybe this is too much for a freshman like you to understand, but writing papers is part of being a scientist. Okay, so in order to get to our ending, we need to uh, reply with scientist, I guess. Oh, wow, this, there's actually, like, quite a few different strings of replies we're going to have to reply with. So, let's start with scientist. I am not a mere scientist. I am an insane mad scientist. <laughs> and then I'm assuming I can zoom past again. Yep. Okay. Assistant. Uh, what do you mean, mad scientist? More like bad scientist, am I right? <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so then we have to reply to bad.
bad with with bad scientist. <laughs> like uh, that's like a pun my grandpa would come up with, but it was pretty good. I liked it. I appreciated it. We're all about puns up in this uh, channel, so. All right, so we'll send that one. Okay, and then we'll zoom. Here we go. Bad scientists, like you could do better. <laughs> okay, so that's the only one we can reply with, so. Um, aren't Americans supposed to be funny? What have they been teaching you over there? <laughs> Are we known to be funny? Are Americans known to be funny over in Japan? Any of you uh, Japanese viewers, if, there's, if there are any of you, uh, let me know. Is that a thing? Are we known to be funny? I didn't think that was the case. <laughs> I didn't know we were known to be funny. All right, cool. Uh, wait, uh, no, reply with that. There we go. Let's see, part-time warrior. Uh, Akebara is such a strange town. Yeah, so I don't think this one matters. Oh, no, 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 no. This one matters. This matters. Wait a minute. Uh, I think this is just for an achievement, though. I don't think this is a uh, congruent achievement that helps us get the true ending. But we'll do it anyway. Uh, so, Akehibara's, uh, Akehibara's such a strange town. Uh, everywhere I look, I see drawings of cute girls. Some of them have uh, even have their breasts fully exposed. I, I forgot about this one. Which startled me. Coming here has been a real culture shock. It's amazing how peaceful Japan is now. Okay. So we are supposed to reply with peaceful, which makes sense. I don't remember what I would have... I, th I think I did culture shock the first time, but we'll say peaceful. I agree. It's all because of the organization's efforts to stupefy Japan. So we just got to wait for her to reply again. Okay. All right. We got one. Part-timer. Part-time warrior. Uh, hey, there it is. Warrior girl's pride. There it is. Okay, so maybe we didn't do that the first time. We must have done the culture shock one or something. Okay. Anyway, got the achievement for that. Uh, so she says, now on TV. Just now, I saw two guys fighting on TV. I think it was some kind of competition. It really got my blood pumping. Hey, mind if I come over and put you in a straight arm bar? It'll be fun. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> It'll be fun, she says. Okay. Command Sambo? So, you you are an organization assassin. Okay. You are an organization assassin. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. So, we got that. Uh, we'll send that for funsies. Just waiting. Okay. So we got one from Faris. Okay, yep, this is the next on the list. Sign of increasing misfortune. Oh no, he escaped, nya. If we don't find him and kill him, misfortune will fall upon Akaba, nya. His name is the end of uh, Chitorial. He's small and nimble, and he cries, Choo, choo, nya. Come here quick. Faris needs your help, nya. Uh, okay, so we need uh, to reply with he, apparently. A rat? What kind of cat girl is afraid of rats? You disappoint me, Faris Nyan Nyan. Nice. Okay. So that's that one. Okay. So, then we got Meiyuri. Okay, this is another important one. What is this one for? Um, okay. Oh, okay, this is, okay. So, going out, le le le. I stopped by the store to buy some crunchy kun. S what? Crunchy kun? <laughs> Since you said you wanted to eat them, but you're you're not even here. That's mean. I put them in the fridge, so eat them soon, okay? Did we say that? I don't remember even talking about that, but okay. Um. Right. So we got to reply. Wait. When did I say I wanted to eat crunchy kun? Yeah, okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so I wonder, I wonder if they're feeding us stuff from like different, uh, 
like if we were experiencing this, if we would have made all these correct decisions to get the true ending right from the beginning, I wonder if it's like messing with our brains because it's like, wait, I never did that, but it's saying that sometime in the future I did and then send it to you, like back to you or something. Interesting. I don't know. Okay, this one stopped me for some reason. So I'm assuming I haven't ever seen this uh, string of events. So we're going to read this one. Let's see. When I arrive, I find Kuretsu sitting on the bench in front of the brawn tube workshop, talking on her phone. What? You called me all the way to Japan, and now you... I knew it. You never wanted to see me, did you? The street is dark and her hair is covering her eyes, so I can't make out her expression. Oh, okay, yeah, this is new. Yeah, we never did this. Is this her dad? But from the sound of her voice, I can tell that she's crying. Why did you ask me to come here then? Can you at least tell me that- Kuretsu lifts her head in surprise. She must have noticed me. She falls into an awkward silence, then turns and walks away. It looked like she was crying. I wonder if she got into a fight. Who could have made her cry like that? It's gotta be her dad, right? Her boyfriend? <laughs> Even a friendless, experiment-loving girl like her can get a boyfriend. No! There's no way such an arrogant, abusive girl can have a boyfriend. <laughs> but then who was it? A sibling? Or maybe her father, who she hasn't seen in seven years. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was thinking. I'm afraid to ask. But it's too scary when she snaps. The memory of her baleful uh, glare sends a shiver up my spine. I hurried to the second floor. <laughs> when I'm safe in the lab, I start browsing at channel. It doesn't look like Titter has made an appearance today. The titter craze that has dominated the occult board for the past week is starting to die down. In the end, it looks like I'm the only one who took titter seriously. Just about everyone is skeptical of him now. Especially the poster called uh, Kiri Gohan and Kamehameha, <laughs> which we know is Kiritsu. That's so funny. I knew that that was going to be somebody important because I'm like... They're the only one with a, an actual name. That was funny. Honestly, I can't tell Titter's true intentions either. Suddenly, I hear the door swing open. Startled, I turn to face the sound. Oh! <sighs> Kuretsu is standing there glaring at me. Her eyes are red. So she was crying. Why did she come back? I... I... Y yeah? I wasn't crying or anything, okay? <laughs> no, you were definitely crying. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous! Where's your proof? <laughs> your eyes are red. Uh... <laughs> Her glare weakens for a second, but then returns at double the intensity. I wasn't crying, okay? You're not being very logical, Christina. In fact, she's not acting like herself at all. Did she come up here just to claim that she wasn't crying? She should have just gone back to her hotel and cried into a pillow instead of coming here to make excuses. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so much for sympathy. Anyway, I, I wasn't crying. Understand? End of discussion. <laughs> that sniffle tanked any credibility she might have had. 
Even now, instead of going back to her hotel, she plops onto the sofa and hugs Mayeri's upa plushie to her chest like a little girl. For the next few minutes, she just sits there, pouting and staring at the wall. Ugh. <laughs> if the TV were on, then we could have a little BGM for some distraction, but unfortunately, painful silence prevails. The only sounds are the whirring of the desktop's hard drive and Karetsu's occasional sniffle. Jeez, what an annoying assistant. How are we supposed to get any science done like this? Christina. Shut up. Don't talk to me. Your lips say don't, but your aura says please. Maybe she's begging for attention? <laughs> listen. You don't have to talk. Just listen. If there's something troubling you, I'll do everything in my power to help. Uh huh? Karitsu looks at me blankly. And it's not just me. I'm sure I speak for Mayeri and Daru as well. So, don't hesitate to come to us. When you want to cry, don't hold it in. Just let it out. We won't reject you. We'll hear you out. Why? Because you're important to us. You're our friend. Uh, yeah. For some reason, Kuritsu blushes and hangs her head. She hugs Upa so hard, his face caves in. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was a little upset. <laughs> you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Just tell me when you're ready. I'll hear you out. Okay. She nods softly. Looks like my sincerity has reached her. Just as planned. <laughs> Show a friendless, experiment-loving girl just a little kindness, and she'll easily grant you her favor. <laughs> How do I know that? Because I, too, have few friends. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my gosh, I love that. I, too, am a friendless... Neat. <laughs> Karitsu's help is critical to solving the mystery of the phone wave name subject to change. Now that my plan has succeeded, her petty private matters shall no longer be an, in an impediment to our science. Normally, I, the great Hawowin Kiyoma, would not concern myself with the mental health of my minions. But if this is the price I must pay to bring my dream to fruition, so be it. With this, Kuritsu's loyalty is assured. Soon, the world will tremble before us. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, so then we got a new mail, which is from Forrest. Is this one important? Yeah, this one seems to be, at least for an achievement. Um, let's see. About abilities. There's a lot I don't know about myself, Nia. Why does Faris have cat ears when other people have people ears? Why can Faris only speak in Nyanyanian? Oh, I remember this one. Okay. Where is my home? The Chinchilla Star. I want to know the truth. That's why I have to go, Nia. To where all the answers can be found. Okay. Uh, right. So, uh, we have to reply with Nyan Nyanian. Um, quit talking like that. It's annoying. <laughs> Yo, that's kind of mean. 
But, uh, yep, that's what we gotta do, so we'll do that. Let's see, does this let me skip? It does. Okay, so we've been through all this. Assistant. Right! Okay, so this is the other part of Kuritsu's thing that we were supposed to do. Um, so, uh, home alone. Is it okay to leave me alone here? I'm an outsider, remember? I could steal all of your precious future gadgets. Aw. I kind of like this, like, little thing that we've got with Kuritsu in this, in this, like, sequence of events we've been doing. Because we didn't really get to know her in the original route that I did. Like, not super well. She was just kind of there to help. Um, but this one, we're getting to know her a little better. That's cool. Uh, outsider. So that's the one we're supposed to reply with. Let's do that. You are not an outsider. You are a lab mem. All right, so we'll do that. Back, 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 back. Okay. Speed through all this. All right, and this is when we go to Faris's place. That's when we let her use the stupid phone wave for no reason. Oh, yeah, and that's right. So Kuritsu was there, and she did that. Okay, that makes... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Eh? It's a disgrace to be thought of as your partner. People will start doubting my character. Anyway, finish your errands and get back here. Ugh. I'm a sucker for Cinderays, man. I, they're just, they're so fun, man. <laughs> uh, Alright, it's, uh, it's a disgrace. That's what we gotta reply with. I just love the personalities. They're just fun. <laughs> then why do you keep coming to the lab? In truth, you're so happy to come to be a lab mem that you can't help it. Isn't that right? <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yep, yep, okay. So we did. We had to call, I think, her instead. Um, and then assistant. Right. Okay. And then this one, we have to reply with that. Okay. So staring at my hand. Seriously, though. Why am I still here? I was supposed to have gone back to America by now. And so we're supposed to pick why am I still here? It's the choice of Steins Gate, Elsai Kongru. <laughs> nice. Right, okay. So I didn't see the animation, but so we already let her use the phone wave. There it is, Genius Girl Melancholy. I got the achievement. Okay, so being here. I don't know about this Steins Gate thing, but maybe Chaos Theory can explain how you derailed my life, lol. At any rate, take responsibility for getting me involved. <laughs> Aw. And we got Mail. Mayuri. Oh yeah, okay, this is another one. I forgot. That isn't everything. We still have this one. Uh, okay. So, about Luka-chan. Um, Luka-chan said she'll forgive you if you cosplay Kakaru-kun from Rynet, or maybe a Upa cosplay would be better, lol. Just kidding. Leave Luka-chan to Mayushi. We reply with this, uh, I haven't seen Rynet, so I don't know what Kakaru-kun cosplay looks like. So we'll send that. That's gotta be her again. Yep. Check the interwebs for more details. Right, okay. Uh, we got number five. Encounter with Bishop Online Bank Hacker. These days, online banking is widespread. Sometimes even billions of units of currency are transferred wirelessly. The current enemy, Bishop, is a tough opponent, cracking through a mobile connection while uh, driving to mask his location. But Kakaru reads his opponent's moves one by one and gradually uh, corners him. In order to close the distance, Kakaru and, and friends don rollerblades, <laughs> moving between hot spots and public phone lines in town. With Kakaru's swift techniques and precise strikes, along with Tamaru's group's teamwork, they successfully corner Bishop. Uh, out of options, their target uses his last resort, one of the nine existing phantom monster programs, Terios. Uh, its capacity for wanton destruction instantly turns the tables on Kakaru. 
Bishop prepares to use Terios to deliver the finishing blow. The vile virus approaches. Checkmate for Kakaru. But then, as if to protect them, something flies out of Kakaru's PC. It's the virtual pet Upa that Kakaru cared for. Upa intercepts the uh, hit meant for Kakaru. Will Upa be okay? Uh, I think that was probably it. That, I think, was it. Oi! Okay. Part-time warrior. Uh, going to infiltrate now. What should I do? I'm so nervous. I can't see my, uh, my own heart, like, peeking through frosted glass. Wish me luck over and out. Yeah, this is when she was trying to find her dad, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Zoom. Oh, okay. All right, so this is a new scene because I can't skip it, so. Anyway. Kuritsu scratches her cheek in what could be taken for a bashful gesture. I hope Amine-san finds her father. Yeah. That would be... Nice. Yeah, it's gotta be her dad, right? Come to think of it, she has father issues too, doesn't she? Maybe she sympathizes with Suzaha. Hey, Okabe. Suddenly, Kuritsu starts fidgeting for some reason. I'm sorry about before. Before? When I hit you with my book, I thought you were just being a pervert. Okay, yeah, this is... okay. But when I thought about it later, I realized that you were being completely serious. But I acted on impulse, without even considering what you had to say. Forget it. Regardless of my intentions, the fact of the matter is that I made Lukaku cry. Just to make sure, you're not a perverted scumbag, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. If he was, he would totally answer you truthfully. Absolutely. Because, you know, perverted scumbags definitely always tell the truth. Make sure my butt? Are you trying to apologize or what? <laughs> I just don't want you to use science as an excuse to be a pervert. Not while I'm helping, at least. What do you take me for? <laughs> My friends are precious to me. I may be an insane mad scientist with an IQ of 170, but even I have my limits. The phone wave name subject to change wouldn't have come this far without you and Daru at my side. Okabe. I am Lab Mem 001, the founder of the lab. If my friends are in danger, I'll rush to their aid, and I would tear my own limbs off before I knowingly brought harm to any of you. <laughs> What's so funny? That has to be the cheesiest thing you've ever said. <laughs> Still, it's nice to hear. The research institute I work at in America is full of talented people from all over the world. But it's not a friendly place. Yeah, that, that's probably true. <laughs> Everyone thinks he or she is the best. You think you have an ego? Over there, scientists hurl insults at each other on a daily basis. Sometimes they even sabotage each other's work. When my thesis was chosen to represent the lab, many of the older men complained. Yeah, that's... that's very possible. And when I came back here as a kind of reverse exchange student, my classmates were all too afraid to talk to me. Compared to that, your lab is childish, but comfortable. Aww. Seems like everyone has their own problems. Yeah, I can imagine that, that that would be the case. Because, <laughs> like, in America, depending on where you're watching from, like, I would say things are 
pretty competitive overall and, and whatnot. And especially if you're getting people from all over the world, it'd probably be like, you know, people have something they have to prove or whatever, right? But yeah, no, I, I've actually, I think I've heard of stories like IRL of people that have done some of the stuff she was saying. You're really concerned about Amine-san, aren't you? That part of you, I can respect. But, but I'm not praising you, okay? <laughs> she suddenly blushes for some reason. I just, you know, thought you should know. Oh. Maybe I... Faris. Hey, there it is. Cat's tea time. All right, got that achievement. Cat tongue, Nya. Sorry, I couldn't come today, Nya. To make up uh, for it, I'll bring some delicious kanyam tea next time. Let's drink it with everyone, Nya. Great. Awesome. Uh-huh. Maybe all I ever wanted was friends. Okabe? Aw. There aren't many people I can trust. After all, I am an insane mad scientist wanted the world over. My enemies are everywhere, wanting to strike. Waiting to strike. Curse this incredible genius brain of mine. <laughs> I... Um think of you as a friend, too. Aw, dude, this is cute. I like this. I like this little other story that we didn't get to see. What? <laughs> you said I was your friend, remember? You said I was important to you. That made me really happy, I guess. Do you have a fever? <laughs> no! What the heck? Here I am trying to find something decent about you, and you... I don't care anymore, stupid! <laughs> You're really... stupid. <laughs> Kuritsu squares her shoulders and quickly walks ahead. I give chase. <laughs> What just happened? Is this girl planning something? Maybe she really is plotting to take over the lab. No, wait. Maybe she's trying to sabotage the party because she doesn't like Suzuha. Huh. No mere assistant is going to pull one over on the great Hawawin Kiyoma. Anyway, time to get my head in the game. We must prepare for the Last Supper. Operation... Eldhimnir. <laughs> the Last Supper refers to our party for Suzuha. In the event she reunites with her father, we'll just celebrate normally. In other words, it will be her Last Supper in Tokyo. However, if she doesn't reunite with her father, we'll kidnap her and force her to participate in our experiments. Sacrifices must be made if we're going to perfect D-Mail technology. In that case, it will be the last supper on this world line. The lab's budget, most of which comes out of my pocket, is tight. But it's okay to party every once in a while. There's no such thing as low risk, high return. High risk, high return. That is how a mad scientist operates. <laughs> I can already taste Suzaha's despair. Huh? Over there. Isn't that... Right, okay, I think we've been through all this. So, yeah, we can skip all this. Okay, okay, so this is the important one. This is the one that I have to, to make... Okay, so alternatively... Reply with Chinchilla Star, which I feel like I've done before. Too bad, your home world has already fallen to the great Hawawin Kiyoma. <laughs> okay, so we send that one.
Okay. And then I think we reply to the same, we, we reply the same way to all the rest, except for the next message that she sends us. I think it was when we were talking with her. Faris. There it is. Okay, yep, we found it. Um, episode 8. Sorry I couldn't come today, Nia. Faris was practicing practicing for the Rynet AB Grand Championships, Nyan. I want to crush my enemies just like in episode 8, Nya. So, and then we reply with episode 8. Episode 8? What are you talking about? Rynet Kakaru, of course, Nyan. Or Nya. Right, and we saw this one, right? Or did we not? Did we not? No, we didn't see this one yet. Wait a minute. Echo and Azuma, typing Master's Secrets. Despite the incident, they safely land in Los Angeles. As they exit the crowded terminal, they notice an American youth helping an old lady with her suitcase. Hey, so Americans are kind people too. <laughs> uh, considerate people live in every country. After a 30-minute bus ride from the airport, they arrive at the LA Convention Center. An aura of feverish competition spreads through the typing master grounds. Most surprisingly, the list of participants includes the world-famous hackers and crackers. Uh, since they leave no evidence, they evade wanted lists. Uh, and among them is the name of their fated opponent, Jay. They have not yet met in person. I bet he looks like a scoundrel. The battles are live streamed worldwide on the internet where they're as popular as the olympics the tournament starts the main race an energetic dj announces the top eight uh, seventh called is kakaru and the last is jay's name did they have streaming live streaming back in uh 2010 man i felt like that wasn't around until a little bit later but maybe they did and i just maybe it was more uh you know, it wasn't as easily accessible by just the average person. Maybe it was more like only broadcasting places could do stuff like that or something. I don't know. That last face is the face of the boy who helped the lady in the airport. The three are shocked. Who is he? By now, Kakaru is the last Japanese com competitor remaining. Another one, Red's subordinate, lost in the first round. All they can do is root for Kakaru. Kakaru's first top eight opponent is the rhythmic dancing typist Lost Lost Shade, who proves no match for Kakaru's speed. Kakaru advances. His next opponent is Indra, Panther, son of an Arabian oil baron. His limber yoga movements make him appear to be jointless. It's a hard match since his movement patterns leave no openings, but Kakaru uses a freezing virus attack. Sealing his opponent's moves, finally, one light touch shatters him like ice. Now it's the finals. Uh, as expected, the opponent is the mysterious J. How will this match turn out? Okay. So that did not get me the uh, achievement, as I thought it would. Uh, it's said in here that it should have. So I must have not have done something earlier on. I must have went a different route or something. Oh, that's right. I don't think Mayuri ever emailed me. She never emailed with it's interesting, and that's why I never got it. But, uh, eh, well. well. We'll maybe go back and do it later. So then we can speed through here. And apparently in Chapter 5, there's nothing that really makes anything branching happen, but we should get some other scenes. So let's see what that looks like. Zoom. Oh, okay. All right, so this is a new scene. New scene. Couldn't skip it. Meiri and Daru go home, leaving me with Kuritsu. She's sitting in the development room chair, endlessly twirling a pen in her fingers. What are you doing? Thinking about the time leap machine. I know we can make it, but I'm wondering what will happen if we actually use it. I wonder if in these other... Uh, like little cutscenes we're getting. If they're gonna explain the forty-eight hour rule, I need I need that answer. I hope they explain it via these other cutscenes, cause cause like that's the thing that's been like holding me up to not to not like 
where I was like, why, why, why is that even there? It feels like very just plot necessary. Um, but maybe Kuretsu will explain here now that we've been talking with her more. Because before she just says, I don't know, I just have a feeling that it won't, you know, let you go back more than 48 hours. So maybe, maybe this will tell us at some point. Ah. She hasn't even started working on the machine. And she's already worried about what comes afterwards? That takes confidence, all right. Are all geniuses like this? What will happen when we use it? I doubt we can find an answer to that question. Not without testing it live. Kuritsu knows that. What she's really wondering is whether it's worth the risk. That's why I avoid arguing with her. You're thinking too hard. Finish the machine, then worry about it. You're so pompous. <sighs> Kuretsu groans and flops down on the desk. It's strange to see her like this. She's usually so cool and collected. But maybe that's an act, and this is who she really is. Hey, Okabe. Can I talk to you about something completely unrelated? Oh, here we go. I'd rather talk about something related. <laughs> Come on, man. You told me before that I could ask you anything. Remember? I did? <laughs> I don't remember that. You were in uh, Howl when Kyoma mindset, so <laughs> probably was just like, yes, yes, I got her to do what I wanted. <laughs> I think my father hates me. She sighs sadly. Ah, so that's what she wants to talk about. A conundrum. This isn't like before, when she was merely an advisor. The Time Leap project depends on Kuretsu to, su to succeed. It is clear, however, that she will be unable to focus as long as these petty concerns distract her. In that case, it falls to me, the great Hawawin Kiyoma, to solve her problem once and for all. Only then can she devote herself fully to the future of the lab. Very well. Speak! <laughs> you really are pompous. I assume it was your father on the phone the other day. I am speaking, of course, of when I found Kiritsu outside the lab, crying on her phone, into her phone. The mood was... delicate. Yeah. I don't remember the last time he had a kind word for me. Even when we were living together, before I went to America, he acted like I wasn't there. We're supposed to be family, aren't we? And do you? How do you treat your father? I was daddy's little girl growing up. You practically had to drag me away from him. Ah. She smiles, but in her smile I see a hint of self-mockery. My father's a physicist. Even as a child, I loved to hear him talk about science. I couldn't understand a word of it, but I always begged him to explain. I wanted to understand his work. So I started studying physics. I must have been five. Dang. I guess that's what makes her a genius. Or perhaps the yearning for her father's love was what gave birth to her genius. Thanks to that, I always got perfect grades in math. I ignored all the other subjects, though, so my grades were a little skewed. 
I even read my father's papers. I was a little girl trying to comprehend theoretical physics, but I gave it everything I had. I needed to understand. By sixth grade, I had learned enough that I could discuss my father's theories with him. I was so happy that I could talk to my father on his level, you know? We used to argue all night long. And then I started winning those arguments. All of them. Yeah, I can definitely see how that would make him hate you. <laughs> Dude, come on, bro! Decency. A tragedy fitting for a girl genius. What kind of scientist loses to a grade school girl anyway? Seriously. You really think that's why? I'm absolutely certain that's why. <laughs> I guess he did have a lot of pride. Anyway, one day, he suddenly stopped talking to me altogether. Then he started fighting with my mom, and finally he stopped coming home. I really loved my dad, so it was a big shock. I felt it was my fault things turned out that way. I couldn't go to school, I was so depressed. And then mom recommended I study abroad. So that's why she went to America. You were just too talented for your own good. So... How do you feel about your father now? I don't know. Karitsu looks down. He's in Japan, right? Have you seen him at all? No. He doesn't want to see me. That's what we were talking about on the phone. I asked if we could meet, but he told me to stay away from him. Her father has quite the inferiority complex. Either that, or maybe it has something to do in the future. Maybe he knows something about her that we don't. That's the only thing I can think, but otherwise, yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. I mean, if he's that fragile. No wonder she was crying. Even for someone as strong-willed as Kuritsu, it must hurt to hear that from her father. Even when we did meet, I wouldn't know what to say. I tried to talk to him before I left, you know? I tried so hard, but he just ignored me. It hurts. Whenever I think about going to see him, I remember those times. I worry he'll ignore me again. And then I can't do anything. Are you crying? J just a little, okay? You want to reconcile with your father, correct? I don't know. If you didn't, then you wouldn't have confided in me. And you wouldn't be crying, would you? True. Just be straight with him. Say, I love you, Dad. Let's make up. I think that's a little out of character for me. It's your father. Stop acting like a weak little girl. <laughs> Dang. Kuritsu jerks upright, her face bright red. I'm not acting like a little girl. Yes, you are. You'll never reconcile with him like that. You need to speak from the heart. Give it to him straight. It's the only way to get your message across. You can't sugarcoat it. If that doesn't work, nothing will. Then you'll just have to hope that time heals the rift between you. 
And how long will that take? How should I know? I'm only a year older than you, remember? <laughs> how long has it been since you went to America? Um, seven years. If nothing has changed in seven years, then maybe it will take twice that much time. I guess you're right. Kuretsu sighs heavily and rests her chin on, in her hand. I like how we're helping her out in her own life when throughout the rest of the story she was always there for us, right? Like, he makes that point. Uh, he's like, you know, she's always been there for us. She's she's my friend. I can't do this to her type of deal, right? Uh, so then going down the true ending path here, we actually had been helping her just as much. So that's that's a cool little parallel, I think. Did my advice backfire? It looks like she's even more depressed now. I fold my arms and rack my brain for a solution. I don't want to see Kuretsu like this. It's pathetic. <laughs> well, when are you going to see him? Huh? Kuretsu opens her eyes wide in confusion. I take out my phone and bring it up, bring up the calendar. I assume it'll be during summer break. Make sure you let me know ahead of time. W -w -w what are you talking about? I might have plans. I'll need to shift my schedule around. Aww. Hold on a second. Don't tell me you plan on coming along. Of course I do. You are my assistant, and I will do whatever it takes to ensure that you are in peak mental condition for the experiment. Uh. Karatsu looks dumbfounded. What? Did I say something wrong? Dude, that's kinda cute! Okay, you've had your fun. I'm in no mood for- I'm being completely serious. <sighs> I'll go anywhere you want. Anywhere in Japan. I'd go anywhere in the world, but I don't have a passport or money. Okabe? You're afraid you won't know what to say, right? Yeah. Then that settles it. I am a master of conversation. You will have nothing to fear with Hawawin Kiyoma at your side. Pfft. Why are you laughing? <laughs> you couldn't hold a normal conversation if your life depended on it. Uh. By Jove, she's right! A mad scientist does not care about things like tact and decorum. He dominates the room with his sheer presence. Perhaps a softer touch is called for here. But thanks anyway. I definitely didn't expect you to offer to come. N not that I'm happy about it or anything. <laughs> I hate how you act like a nice guy sometimes. It's confusing. <laughs> confusing how? Why is she yelling at me anyway? Shouldn't she be thanking me instead? Um, Okabe? That offer. I can take you up on it, right? Of course. Then, once we're done upgrading the phone wave... I want you to come with me. Ah. As you wish. Where is your father, anyway? Amori. Amori? That's where he lives now. That's way up at the north end of the island. Like 700 kilometers or something. I wasn't expecting to have to go that far. 
What? You're not going to back out, are you? You already promised. I'm taking you whether you like it or not, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll Mori it is. If promising to go to Aomori will let Kuritsu concentrate on the time leap machine, it's a small price to pay. A small price indeed. Dude, that was freaking cute. What the heck? All right. So this is all stuff I've seen. Okay. So then we got mail assistant. Going from Tokyo to Aomori by bullet train is over 15,000 yen per person. Holy crap. Um, but the overnight bus is only 5,000 yen. Which do you prefer? I want to cover the traveling expenses, but I don't have that much on hand. I'm staying at a hotel, but I'm not a celeb. Mama's pretty strict on money. Not to mention she'd kill me if she knew I was going to see my father. So maybe we should go buy an uh, overnight bus to fit our budget? Alright, so then we're supposed to reply with... Uh, let's see, traveling expenses. What is this nonsense? Don't forget your duty as a lab mem. <laughs> really? That's the right one? That's funny, okay. That doesn't seem right, but sure. There she is. Idiot. What do you mean, nonsense? Die. What the heck, Okabe? <laughs> okay, so, uh... That apparently triggers the next, what they're calling a flag, uh, for the true ending. Somehow. Oh, no, no, no. There's one that we get a little bit later. So that was just the, the bridge to it. So, let's see. Oh, there it is. This has got to be it. Sorry for getting mad. But Okabe, did you have to say it like that? <laughs> dude, she made a little face and everything. What the heck? Aw, dude. Kuritsu's definitely growing on me now. <laughs> Like, I liked her before, even without all this, but, like, ah, uh, man, between her and Mayeri, dude, ah, uh, they're, they're just the best. I love both of them. Alright. That's cute. Okay, then we got this one. We got one from Faris. Is Mayushi okay? Tell her to have fun at Kamama for me. I don't think I can go this year, Nyan. I just don't have the energy, Nyan. I'm completely burned out. I can hear a voice shouting, Get up, Joe. Nyan. Someone, save me. The world is collapsing, Nyan. Okay, so... Uh, we have to reply with collapsing. You're messing with me again, aren't you? Stop making me worry. Right? Okay, this one's gotta be the farthest one? Yeah, okay. Uh, when I listen to Phantasm's song at times like these, I sink even deeper into the darkness, Nya. <laughs> Join me, Kioma. Oh, it's actually music again. What the heck? Alright, well, we don't want to get copywritten, so we'll just uh, back out of that. So, it said that doing that one should have given me the song, Songs of Chaos Achievement, but I must have missed something, so... Because it didn't, uh, because it, it didn't, it didn't activate, so. Oh, well. Not a big deal. We're not in it for the achievements right now. But if we can pick them up along the way, then, uh, you know.